this is Signal Hounds talking RF, and today we're going to compare the popular BB60D and one of our newest products, the SP145. Hello and welcome to Talking RF. Sean here with Justin Crooks, Senior RF Engineer and Hardware Designer for all Signal Hounds products. Today we're talking about the differences between the BB60D and the SP145. These products are impressive in their own right, and in this video, Justin, the creator and architect behind both products, will give us a deep dive into what each products do best and how they are different, what applications they're best suited for, and how the SP145 helps to bridge the gap between the BB series and the SM series line of products. Justin, please tell us about the differences between the BB60D and the SP145 and why it's important. Sure. I mean, there's the obvious differences. The SP145 goes up to 14 and a half gigahertz. The, it sweeps faster. Uh, the BB60D only goes to six gigahertz, but it has a built-in pre-selector. Um, you know, when you're looking at kind of the, the feature set of um, each product, whether it's SP145, BB60D, SM200, you know, the big things are, you know, does it have a pre-selector? What is its architecture? Is it a low IF system? Is it a, a double conversion superhead system? Is it some other system? Um, so the SP145 is that low IF architecture like the SM200. Um, and that gives it, you know, let's say if you're in overlapping frequency ranges, uh, the SP145 is going to have better phase noise. It's actually going to have even more dynamic range than the BB60D just because you know, that low IF architecture combined with the extra power gives us a little bit more room to play in that dynamic range space. And what does the BB60D do best versus what the SP145 does best? Yeah, so the standout feature on the BB60D is its pre-selector, built-in pre-selector, IP2, uh, you know, typically in the columns band of like plus 65 dBm. That means, you know, if you've got a minus 20 dBm signal, you can easily measure harmonics down to like 85 dB plus with no additional filtering requirements, no, uh, you know, just a simple wideband antenna um, or direct connect. Uh, with something like the SP145, you know, you're not going to be able to measure harmonics quite as well. But if you, you know, if you're looking at a two or four megahertz channel and you want to do like adjacent channel power measurements, you know, the SP145 with its dynamic range might actually be the better instrument. Uh, I mean, the BB60D will also, you know, do just fine in, in those types of measurements. But anything that requires, you know, the, the best possible dynamic range, um, the SP145 is going to edge out the BB60D. I know that the uh, BB60D uh, consumes less power than the SP145. Yes. The SP145 is a little, uh, it, it needs a little more juice to, to get going. Yeah, closer uh, to 10 watts instead of six. Yeah, so what? Uh, why is that? And what does that afford uh, the user? What, what, you know, being that it draws more power, does it have more power? <laughs> <laughs> In general, yes. Uh, the main thing that that extra power gives you is the in improvement in the linearity. Um, your IP3 type numbers, um, the SP145 is going to have a slightly better IP3 than the BB60D because we do have that higher power budget. Also, the uh, um, IQ demodulators that are available below 6 gigahertz, um, a good one is going to use a watt or more of power uh, just all by itself. Um, and uh, Without using that that category of chip, uh, your linearity suffers so much that it's it's just not even a real product. Can you pick one specific application uh, or field use, I should say, one specific field use that you can see the BB60D doing better than the SP145 and vice versa? So the BB60D, let's say you're in a very crowded uh, RF environment or perhaps even like actually over a cable, uh, cable TV, for example. Um, that is just a huge amount of broadband energy. Um, and the SP145, since it doesn't have a pre-selector, you would have to add some additional filtering to be able to see exactly what's on that, you know, that, that cable. Um, whereas 
So the BB60D is going to op operate better when like there's multiple octaves of RF energy that you're looking at. Um, where the SP145 is going to be better is, you know, let's say you've got one band that you're trying to analyze and you really want to analyze all the way down to the noise floor. Um, maybe you're doing adjacent channel power, maybe you're doing, you're checking EVM on a QAM 4096 signal, something that really requires dynamic range. Um, the SP145 is going to edge out the BB60D in those applications. If you have any questions for Justin or if you want to know more about the SP145, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below.